Turn with me in your Bible to Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 18, and we're going to talk to you today about the Grinch who tried to steal Christmas. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel." Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring word back to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. When they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. Now, when they had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the, the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I call my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry. And he went forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard of Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because there are no more. Father, we thank you today for your word. Be our preacher and teacher in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the best known stories of all time that have to do with Christmas is probably Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Uh, David Bigelow did an absolute, in fact, if I had closed my eyes, I would have thought I was going to see a green man standing up here. This pro popular Christmas allegory has become one of the most popular Christmas movies for kids and adults alike. It stars, as you know, Jim Carrey as a green creature who isn't having any fun. Probably everyone here has either seen the original movie or seen the cartoon. Let me tell you, if you have children or grandchildren or great-grandchildren, you have probably seen The Grinch. It was so amazing this morning when... Sophie come running down the aisle in Bruce's arms, actually, and she reached out and grabbed my tie and said, that's the Grinch. And then her next great thing was, where's Granny? I just want to tell you this story because I thought it was pretty amazing. I said, I, just come here and I'll take you to Granny. We went walking down the hallway toward my office with the, the my office door was closed. And I said, we're going to see Granny. I said, you know where she is? She said, yes, she's in that closet. So much for my immaculate office. We all understand today that there is no such thing as a whoville with people whose noses are permanently upturned and uh, there are no group of people who have outlandish hair. Okay, take that out. Um, we all understand that there are no green creature by the name of Grinch. We understand those things. 
But we do have some people in our lives that in all probability behave like the Grinch, people who think like the Grinch, and people who believe like the Grinch, and people who are hurting like the Grinch. You don't have to live in faraway lands or in a cave on top of a high mountain. They may be your neighbors. They may be your mailman. They may be your brother or sister. They may be sitting next to you on the very pew today. This is where I stop and do the warning. Please do not elbow the person sitting next to you. (laughs) It would be easy to spot Grinches. They don't have green stuff all over their body and, and they don't have a lot of things the Grinch had. But that's not the way today's Grinches look. They are more subtle. They wear the same style clothes in all probability that you wear. They have a wife, two kids, and a dog. They're probably Christmas presents under their tree. So if there's so much similarity between the Grinch of our fairy tale and the Grinch that you know, how do you know one when you meet one? Well, let me ask you another question. How do you know if you are one? And so as we continue our perspective on Christmas, I want to give you three signs that will enable you to identify the Grinches in your life, even if you're looking in the mirror at one. In order to do that, I'm going to to give you a look at the Grinch story found in Matthew chapter 2 that we read in your hearing. Now, you know, first of all, you are a Grinch if you get upset when others invade your territory. You know you are a Grinch if you get upset when others invade your territory. Verses 1 through 6 says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw a star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the child was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judah, in in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, By no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come the ruler who will be shepherd of my people Israel. In Dr. Seuss's story, he introduces the Grinch as standing on a ledge outside of his cave, which overlooks the village of the Hoos down in Whoville. He is there on that ledge with his arms crossed, and his head slightly tilted to one side with a scroll on his face and his foot tapping on the snow-covered ground. It is obvious that the Grinch is irritated. He is ticked, okay? That's as close as I can get and still be in a sermon, all right? So, and it doesn't take long for us to understand why The Grinch is so upset and his attitude is so sour at this time of the year. There are two things. One, it's Christmas time. But the thing that really gets him upset is the fact that he hears the music from the village down below. They are blowing their horns. They're whistling their whistles. They're singing their songs. They're making such a racket that no matter how much he tries, he cannot shut it out. What do you think, he says, those who villers? Do they think that I came up here all the way to the top of this mountain so that I could hear their music? No, the Grinch went to the mountain to get away, obviously. He wanted nothing to do with Whoville. He wanted nothing to do with Whovillers, and he wanted nothing to do with Christmas. In the Grinch movie, we learn why he had secluded himself so far away from everyone else. 
It seems, now this is true here. This is, you could just write this down. Not real biblical, but it's true. It seems that when he was just a little Grinch being brought into this world, the stork had messed up the addresses. You know about the stork? He came to your house one time or two or three, and then you shot him. Oh, no, that's not, that was another story. I, yeah, that was another story. And so they brought the Grinch to the wrong family. Obviously, he wasn't like the family that they brought him to. The rest of the kids in that family, if there were other kids, were not green. Uh, they were not abnormal like he was. So he knew it didn't take him long in life to know that he wasn't going to fit in. He tried to, it just never worked. His feelings were hurt, his hopes were crushed, and when he tried to reach out for love, he just got it stuffed back down his throat. So he decided to get as far away as possible so that he would not be bothered by those folk ever again and he would not have to be show, uh, sh shielded aside and, and, and unaccepted. And so that way they couldn't hurt him anymore. Now, after all of these years, they are invading his territory. Their music was reaching his ears and he wanted to shut it out, but he couldn't. There's another Grinch whose territory was invaded. His name was Herod. Herod had been placed in charge of the whole land of the Jews by the emperor of Rome. In fact, he was given the title king of the Jews by the Roman Senate. Not everyone was happy because Herod was called the king of the Jews. In fact, most of the Jews that he ruled over hated him severely. Though he built great works for them that included a brand new temple and other great things of art and, and of splendor, they still hated him. They did not receive him. And so what happened is they, they transferred all of their hatred of Rome as an invaded enemy toward Herod. He spent all of his days wondering and worrying and paranoia that they were going to lose control of his throne. Because of that fear, because of that worry, he kicked or killed, brother, anyone off who he considered to be a threat to his throne. Let me give you an idea how serious he was. First of all, he killed his wife because he thought his wife was getting too much power and too much say so. And people were talking to her behind his back. So he had his wife killed. And then one of his sons went to him and told him his other two sons were plotting against him to take over his throne. So he killed his two sons. A little bit later, one of his servants came and said, your other son is plotting to take over your throne, so he killed his other son. So the truth of the matter is, if you wanted to be king, you didn't tell anybody because you were going to get killed. And so now the wise men are coming looking for this one that they heard through the prophets was going to be king of Israel. So Herod was a little bit upset. So he called him to himself and he asked, where is this one who has been born king of the Jews? Or they said, we saw a star in the east and have come to worship him. King of the Jews. Mm. Mad. Curious. Upset. So he said, where is this king of the Jews that I may go and worship him? We have a lot of people in your life, at least some people in your life, who have something in common with the Grinch. There are people in your life that have been hurt. They have been wounded emotionally. 
they have been hurt because of physical abuse or emotional abuse or sexual abuse. Some of them have been hurt because of a bitter, angry divorce. And they have gone into a state of anger and resentment and have run off to their own little world to hide. Like the Grinch, they figure that it's easier to shut off relationships than to run the risk of being hurt again. The problem is depression makes us want to be by ourselves. And being by ourselves is the worst thing that we can do. The cry of the depressed is simply just leave me alone. Well, let me tell you today, you need to get out of your cave. You need to listen to the music. You need to go where the people are. It's only then that you're going to find people that really do care, although you think they don't. People who love you just the way you are, although you don't think they do. So why is it that people are in their caves because there's never been probably a Sidney Lou? Sidney Lou did for the Grinch what no other people were able to do, and that is she was able to invade his territory by one simple way of tearing down the walls that had become his prison. And that brings me to the second thing. The second way that you may know a Grinch is they pretend to be something that they aren't. Verses seven and eight says, then here, when he had privately called the wise men, acquired of them diligently what time the star, star appeared, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. You see, the Grinch knew that he was hated down in Whoville. And if he went down there as himself, he would never get anything accomplished. People would either run him off or run away from him. They would either attack him or they would either uh, berate him. As soon as he was gone, they would go back to their normal way and they would be the same people, the same attitude that they had prior to him going. So, as much as the Grinch had grown to hate Christmas <coughs> and had grown to hate the image of Christmas, he decided that he was going to go down as Santa Claus. Then a light came on. If you remember the movie, that, that devilish smile from ear to ear crossed his face. He found some red material, sewed it all together, made him a Grinch Santa Claus suit put some puffy stuff on the sleeves around the collar and he put him on some black boots and then he got his dog Max and put some fake antlers on his head as if he was his reindeer. And now he's ready to go to Whoville as Santa. But rather than to deliver the presents, he had a plan. He was going to every house pretending to be Santa and instead of leaving presents, he was going to take the presents that were already there, put them in his bag, and destroy them. And so off he went. And he went into the houses, stole all the presents, even the cheese that the mouse would eat. They would not accept him the way he was. That's fine. He would take revenge. He would do it his way. He would get even. He would show them what he thought. And he would show them who they were. He would pretend to be something that he wasn't. Herod had the same plan. When he discovered that there was someone who was threatening to invade his kingdom, he quickly called together a chief priest and all of those that would know, those who knew the Bible well, and he found out where this new king was to be born. Herod may not be willing to accept this new king's rule over his life, but at least he knew to go to the Bible to find out information about him. The teachers told Herod that he would be prophesied 
that the king of the Jews would be born in the city of Bethlehem. When he discovered that, he called the wise men back to himself and told them, go, make a careful search of the child, and as soon as you find him, report back to me that I too may go and worship him. We know that that wasn't the reason that Herod wanted to go. We know that Herod wanted to kill this child because he was threatening his throne. Well, I must say that there are people that in your life that are pretenders. Now, let me just say, there's nothing wrong with pretending. Children do it all the time. If you've ever had a child in your house, there's a good possibility they have pretend friends. And they play with their pretend friends and they talk to their pretend friends and that's okay. The problem with pretending is when it goes on until you pretend to be something that you are not as an adult. Yes, well, I don't do that. Oh, yes, we do. We do it all the time. For an example, let's talk about Christmas. We get together with people that we haven't seen in 11 months and 29 days. They probably are family members that you don't like. It's that brother-in-law that you can't stand to be around. Hello? Or it might be somebody at the office. Somebody that you don't even like. The truth of the matter is you don't even want to be there. Let's make that a little bit better. Let's make this sermon oriented. What about church? Do you know that there are probably people sitting on the pew next to you that don't want to be here sitting next to you? Surely not. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They look at you and smile and say, how you doing? And you say, just fine. (laughs) And you think, if it wasn't so obvious, I'd get up and move. (laughs) Maybe during the offering when everybody else is walking around, I could get up and move. Then you're afraid you're going to get somebody else's seat. You're going to be in worse shape than you were sitting by somebody you don't like. Well, let me just stop and talk to you today. I don't know if I can speak about every church, but I can talk to you about this church. This is a church where you can come and find acceptance, regardless of if you're green or if you're normal. Are you listening? Whether you are black or white or yellow or somewhere in between doesn't bother us at all. Doesn't matter where you've been, what you've done. Doesn't matter what you're involved in today. This is a church where you can come and people will love you and receive you and accept you. You don't have to wear suits and ties. You don't even have to wear jeans with holes in them. You can wear Bermuda shorts and flip flops. And you can say a shirt that says, no shirt, no shoes, no problem. That's okay with us. You see, the truth of the matter is that most of the people in this church today know that we're here because of his grace. And if it wasn't for his grace, we wouldn't be here. So the Grinch and Herod both pretended to be something that they were not in order to get something that did not belong to them. So maybe you've been there. Maybe you have been the first two. Maybe you fit in. But let me give you the third one before we run out of time. And that is, when you are a Grinch, it is hard for you to join in other people's joy. Verses nine through 15, and after they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star uh, that they had seen in the east went before them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. 
And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother to escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet out of Egypt, I call my son. With his Santa suit on and, and his dog Max, Grinch headed down the mountain into Whoville and began to go from house to house retrieving all the things that Santa had left for each little boy and little girl. Even as small and as hard as his heart was, he could not help but notice the beauty of the houses with all of their decorations. Must have brought back memories of the few good Christmases that he had while he lived in Whoville. Maybe he remembered the presents that he had opened for himself. Maybe he remembered the roast beef and, and enjoyed the songs that he had once tried to sing. But it didn't matter. Because you see, being a Grinch meant that he could not join in the joy that others were experiencing. That would mean showing weakness. That would mean forgiving them that had caused hurt in his life. And it just wasn't worth it. So instead of joy, he held on to his bitterness. Harry, too, was surrounded by joy and could have joined in, but he refused to. He thought the cost was too great. When the wise men received the message about where the child was born, they quickly headed off toward Bethlehem. Can't you imagine what must have been going through their minds? Maybe they had seen the star for a long time, but maybe they didn't quite understand where it was and what was going on. But after understanding the prophets, then they realized they had their answer. Verse 10 says they were overjoyed. The star had stopped. Their journey was complete. They were getting ready to be introduced to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the King of the Jews, their King. Look what happened next. Verse 11 says when they got to the house, they met Mary and I assume Joseph. And then they saw Jesus. What a moment of joy. They saw the child. Now let me take just a moment here before we run out of time to tell you that this was not at the manger. This was at least a year later. The, the wise men did not go to the manger. This is later. So those little things that you see sitting on the tables and sitting on the, on the yards and all that with, with shepherds and wise men, while the shepherds were there, the wise men didn't come until later. Jesus was at least a year old. That's why Herod had all the babies killed two years old and under to make sure that he got to Jesus. And so what's so amazing about this is how close can you get to Jesus and not know the joy of knowing him? Let me tell you about Herod. He was two miles away. He was only two miles from where Jesus was. Herod was so close to finding the joy and the peace that he needed for his troubled soul, but he chose to ignore it. He chose to descend uh, to send someone else rather than go for himself. He did not want to run the risk of being pushed aside for someone else, maybe greater and more popular than himself. Herod was a wicked man, but it's people like Herod that Jesus came to die for. Because of the desire of a child by the name of Cindy Lou. Her name was actually Cindy Lou Who. Say that real quick and it'll make you sneeze. <laughs> Cindy Lou Who, all of a sudden, caused something inside of her to reach out to the Grinch. 
She reached out with a hand of caring and a a hand of kindness, ultimately a hand of love. Grinch finally realized that Christmas was something greater than himself. Christmas, the Grinch realized, was about loving and living and giving. The Lord whom we exalt at Christmas is not just another baby in the manger. He's not a character in a Christmas story. He's far more. He's the Lord of glory that offers salvation to a lost and dying world. If you're in the sound of my voice today and you have found some of the characteristics of the Grinch in your life, even if you're saved, I promise you that you can develop a Grinch attitude. So let me just tell you the revelation that Grinch received and ask you to live about this Christmas and the rest of your life. Why not develop this Christmas season and a lifestyle for your life, one of loving, living, and giving? Let's stand together. If you never received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I encourage you today to step out from where you are, make your way to the front. Heads bowed, eyes closed. If you'll make this prayer, lift your hands up. Say it out loud with me. Father, as we involve ourselves in this Christmas season, help me to realize the joy of living, loving, and sharing with others. May the love that you have shown for me be the guiding principle in my life as I seek to make Christmas real in a world of unbelief. I confess I can because I'm more than a conqueror through Christ who loved me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever God's put on your heart, I want you to step out from where you are. Make your way to the front. You come right now as God speaks to you.